Well, well, well. Rockstar and Grove Street. Fancy seeing you boys here again. What's that? You finished your homework? Patch 1.06, you say? We'll give it here then. By Gove. It might have actually done it. Welcome once again to Switch Up, where I haven't suddenly turned into some East London gangster, but I am also slightly sceptical about these new patches. I've gone through the frame rates, the frame pacing, the draw distance, the load times, the handheld performance to hopefully bring you some good news. If you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. With that said, let's check Rockstar and Grove Street's homework, shall we? Is it up to scratch? Well, let's find out. Starting with Grand Theft Auto 3, I'm initially struck by much improved frame pacing. This is the rate at which the frames are delivered to your screen. If there are hitches and stutters, then they're very noticeable. And in every previous patch, this was the case almost constantly. Now, they haven't completely eradicated it. I can still see it, particularly in certain areas like the subway or near the subway, but the majority of the experience is much smoother. When we jump over to frame rates, it's shown here as well you can see that it's sitting at around 30 frames per second almost all the time although there are the occasional dips just below down to 28 these are much less frequent than they were before what does this mean for you well it means you can actually control the car without having to slow right down the next major issue was the draw distance draw distance was so close to the player it made it almost impossible to control your vehicle that combined with the low frame rate and terrible frame pacing made it a real chore to try and play if we directly compare the draw distances there is certainly an improvement it's interesting to see how they've implemented this while it is further away from the player it also seems to almost fade in at a different rate. It makes it significantly easier to see what's coming in the distance. Whereas before, you could quite literally smell the seat lever before they materialized in front of you. Handheld mode wasn't too much of an issue for me, honestly, because the small screen hides a lot of these imperfections. But here again, handheld is significantly better. It feels smoother across the board and it's more pleasurable to play. Still not perfect. We're up to about an 8 out of 10 and I can handle an 8 out of 10. Let's jump over then to Vice City. Now, Vice City, in my experience of the original release, was slightly better than GTA 3, which was a little odd. And once again, when just driving around the city, getting in and out of the car and doing other shenanigans, it feels significantly smoother. And just as before, that draw distance is much better. I can actually crash in style now whilst being able to see what's in the distance, whereas before it would just pop in and I'd crash and I'd be infuriated. Now I only have myself to blame, which in many ways is even more upsetting. Shadow draw distance is still quite close in both 3 and Vice City, but who cares about about that really it's all about those cars and yes they still materialize in as with GTA 3 but when it's further you can actually enjoy the experience for me that frame pacing is the best in Vice City potentially of all three games frame rates confirm the same thing this seems to say 30 plus almost all the time it's locked at 30 I did notice a few strange instances where it seemed to almost jump above that but yes very good Rockstar very good Grove Street these are two nice pieces of homework so far. When we go over to handheld for Vice City, it's a similar story. The visual quality of the games it still has a slight blur to it, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was at launch. I haven't bumped into any invisible walls, so potentially there's been a bit of work there as well. And after my incredible drive in the car, actually takes a good chunk of time before it explodes. Last but not least, we have San Andreas, my favorite of all three games, and the one that doesn't quite have the frame pacing down pat in some areas. The area around about your house and where the bridge is, I do still feel that the frames are fluctuating slightly in terms of their delivery to the player, but the frame rate graphs are confirming a much improved experience. And particularly when you're outside of the major towns or you're flying around in a plane, you can see the improvement. That draw distance again, much improved over the original and now playable. I still think they could potentially push this a little further, but I honestly thought they'd given up after patch 1.05. So yeah, this is really nice to see. I have noticed a few audio issues still with some cars, particularly the patrol car in San Andreas. The engine sounds seem to pop in at full volume and then low. So Grove Street, maybe you can just have a little look at some of these last few niggling issues. And I'm not sure if any of you noticed, but before the load time transition, 
tensions between moving inside and outside of some of the locations in San Andreas were ludicrously long. One of them in particular, which was pointed out to me by one of you guys, was when you leave CJ's house. Now, I'm not going to say it's quick, but it does feel slightly quicker than it was before. I know loading in assets is one area that the Nintendo Switch struggles with, with its memory speeds, but it's good to see it's slightly improved. I'm not sure if I have footage of it, but it was almost like GTA 3 was trying to show me how much improved the uh, rain effect was because it rained for about my first hour of play with the new patch and yeah they've completely fixed up the rain i know they've done that in previous ones but it really hits home now that it actually runs at a semi-decent frame rate flying around san andreas with the different lighting effects now and the fog laying low over the surfaces it just looks so much better than it did before in that regard i'm sure i speak for a lot of the community when i say we really do appreciate you going back and working on these yes it would have made more sense to wait and have it released in this condition physically because i believe the physical versions probably got version 1.05 but 1.06 in my opinion is good enough if you were asking is it ready to be purchased i would say yes i think it may well now be ready to be purchased would I be buying it at the prices they're asking RRP? No, not at all. But if you find it at a discount or you're made of money, then I would tentatively say it's good enough now. It can be slightly better, but it's okay. It's passed. It's on a C+. We will obviously cover any new patches that come out, just for those people that want the uh, B+, A. But really, just enjoy it now. Have a laugh. Get yourself down that gym, eat too many burgers, chase a train, and try and fly an aeroplane under a bridge. Happy days. Thanks so much to all of you who've been watching and maybe waiting for this episode. If you enjoy the content, consider sticking around. And a big thanks to our patrons. You guys support us each and every month. All that's left to say is, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! <laughs>